This week, Alex is in the Lake District, helping the Gilpin, an award-winning hotel which has been struggling to find the right executive head chef for 10 months. It is the most frightening uh, experience to have when you've got somebody in the kitchen who is just letting the whole place fall apart. Established 25 years ago by John and Christine Cunliffe, this hotel has been a labor of love. And it's still very much a family affair, with son Barney and daughter-in-law Zoe joining as managers. But with the Lake District becoming a gastro hotspot, the hotel wants to future-proof its foodie reputation. So what we would love to do is regain our, our Michelin star. People are more likely to come if they know that you've uh, got the Michelin star. But hiring hasn't been easy. For the right chef, they are willing to pay up to six figures. It's one of the main reasons why people will come to Gilpin for terrific food, and therefore we have got to pay the, the, the rate to attract that sort of person. After advertising the post of head chef, nine applicants have been selected and will all undergo a day-long interview. Good luck, Nick, mate. Looks Good nice, yeah. guys. Well done, mate. Looks lovely. Looks nice. Yesterday, the first three went head to head. Lee's culinary skills were quizzed. Do you feel the need to measure it? I don't feel the need to measure it. I'm not mad about that dish. Not, not in the environment that we that we would be serving it in. It's it's a bit heavy. But his signature dish had star quality. Wow. That is much more the kind of style yeah. that I imagine that you're looking for. Well done, Lee. Yeah. Good. While Simon's timekeeping let him down. A little bit longer. Sorry, guys. You're all waiting on Simon. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So that has been noted. His pan-fried halibut blew them away. The fish has wow factor. It's absolutely delicious and very well cooked. Nicolas's technical experience shone through. We'll have the uh, panna cotta of Saint-Jacques, then uh, a ginger crumble pastry. I'm fascinated to try that. And he's the only one who got the portion size on the nose. But his job hopping was a concern. He's obviously mm. good. Mm. It's just whether he's good and he's a stayer. Can you convince me that your trunk is going to be staying somewhere? Oh, believe me, my suitcase, I'm fed up to see it. I don't want to see any more suitcases, and, and, uh, and that's a promise. In the end, it was Simon's passion that got him shortlisted to the final interview at the end of the week. Simon, well done. Thank you very much. It's day two, and our next three chefs are about to be cross-examined by Alex and the owners. What is it that you're looking for? The key criteria is finding someone who can move our food onto another level mm. and has got the skill set to, to, to do that. We've got a lot of competition in the area. Keeps us all on our toes. Keeps us all on, yeah, it certainly does. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's very good for us all. But, but, you know, you want to always stay, you know... A step ahead of the step game. Step ahead if you can. So it keeps us all pushing each other, which is a very good thing. You have to have been in this business quite a long time. And to if, feel like yes. you could become an executive head chef. But, it, but if mm. we find the one we want, he's obviously going to be a man who is very um, experienced and has really put his, his, his groundwork in. And he'll want to develop himself. He'll want to move on and have other ideas. And we'd like to find someone who would do that with us. So, should we talk about our three chefs today? Yeah. It's an early start for our chefs. For 41-year-old head chef Ian Simpson, the position appeals to his competitive side and desire to win a Michelin star. I'm very excited about it. Um, I like the idea of the challenges, and I can't wait to see what I can produce. He has a fantastic CV. Mm -hmm. He's working as head chef at the Grove in Ealing. He was head chef at Albert Roux at Cheru for four years. I think it's very interesting that, that Albert Roux has taken him on. There must be something behind this guy. Mm -hmm. and, he knows and, his couples, doesn't he? He does. This job, for me, is the best opportunity I'm ever going to get of becoming a head chef in a Michelin star restaurant. Next is Italian-trained Michael Quackier. He feels ready to move up the career ladder and wants to move his family out of London. Wow, look, just look. <laughs> I think a view like this, I've never seen it. 
Really, I've never seen a view like that before. I have to say, uh, on paper, he doesn't look qualified. I'm slightly worried that he's going to fail at the first stage of interview. You're right, it's, it's more Italian brasserie style, but um, let's see what he comes up with. I think it's what every chef will really like to have, you know, and obviously time will tell. <laughs> I mean, he's the wild card, let's put it that mm. way. And our last chef is Rishikesh Desai. Mm. For 12 years, Rishikesh has worked in the restaurant, brasserie and cookery school at Lucknam Park. But he's now ready for a change and wants to demonstrate his award-winning culinary skills. I've been waiting for an opportunity like this for the last five years now, and my heart tells me that Rishikesh, you are ready, just go for it. You know, has he got a wide enough experience? It's, it's largely in, in the one place. I have done as much as I can to prove myself in this industry, uh, winning the Roof Scholarship, winning National Chef of the Year, and uh, now is the time to help me in improving my culinary status. I'm interested to know why. He was one year as head chef at the Mission starred Park restaurant, and he then went to the brasserie to be head chef. So it was a kind of, in a way, it was a step down. And then he's gone to the cookery school. So I think let's keep an open mind at this stage. Yes. And see how they deal with the first stage of interview. Very interesting day, isn't it? Mm. The candidates will be scrutinised on their chef skills undergo a face-to-face -face interview and prepare a pre-planned signature dish. I don't know what they're going to ask me to do, but all I know is I'm going to produce the best food I've ever produced in my life. I'm determined because it's going to change my life. It's going to change the life of my family. I'm very nervous. As a head chef, I have dealt with pressure like this before. This nervousness hopefully will bring the best out of me. The hotel serves traditional produce like Herdwick Hoggart, presented to a fine dining standard. Barney and Christine will be looking for similar quality dishes from the chefs that would sit well on their menu. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Hi, Hello. so nice to meet you. Hello. These are Christine and Barney, yeah. who own and run this beautiful establishment. We thought, before we sat you down to talk to each of you individually, we would have a look at your skills. Right. Um, I think anyone can write anything on the CV. You have some hogget here. And the challenge is to bone and roll and tie it to serve us a dish in exactly an hour and a half. Hoggett is a year-old lamb, a traditional British ingredient that Barney and Christine want turned into a Michelin standard dish. It's a fantastic ingredient to use. Um, I'm actually going to use the bones to, to make a lovely, uh, lovely stock because uh, I want to get all those little bits of flavour off there I want to, want to keep. This is a cut which we don't use where I'm currently working. I'm trying to stuff this with some mushrooms and spinach and hopefully that should bring more flavours out. Obviously, I have to choose the right ingredients, you know, to, you know, to go with it. Yeah, re really happy. I'm <laughs> It's really... I'm lucky. I say I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm quite pleased that he looks competent already. I mean, he doesn't yeah. look like this is a task that scares him. No. He's looking very confident, isn't he? Mm. And a good start, I know. Rolled saddle of hoggard is one of the most popular dishes on the hotel menu. But at £12 a kilo, it's also one of the most expensive. For owner Christine, the chef's preparation skills are key if wastage is not to occur. This is really going to challenge our chefs. This dish is all about knife skills, minimum wastage, and ultimately, presentation of a beautiful dish. Deboning will require the chefs to use clean cuts to produce four trimmed fillets. These should be rolled up in the trimmed fat, which needs to be of equal thickness. The chefs must tie the hogget to the correct tension, creating a neat roll so that it will cook evenly throughout. The tying of it is terribly important because it holds the whole thing together while it's being cooked. And if this part isn't done properly, 
the whole thing will fall apart. Obviously, we're looking for their ability to combine ingredients, and so it's whether they can do something delicious and clever that Christine and Barney would be happy to see on their menu. We're not told much by Michelin about what they're looking for, but we know they look for consistency. And I have to say, something I would love to see from at least one chef today is consistency, both in this dish that they're preparing now and in their signature dish later today. With the prep well underway, Alex and Christine check on the chef's progress. So, you first. Tell us, what are you going to do? OK, so I'm going to season the inside. I'm going to use rosemary mint. Which obviously a uh, classic with, with lamb and hoggers. What are you going to serve with it? A cauliflower puree. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do some roast parsnips, um, and a little bit of confit garlic, and um, as I said, I'm going to do something with a fillet just now as well. Okay. okay. Are you still thinking about something? I else? am. I'm still, yeah. still, yeah. I've got, a, I've got a, a vision. I'm just, just getting it confirmed. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll let you get on. Thank you. So the end. Yes. First impressions? Wasn't too impressed, really, with his uh, butchery. He cut the whole hoggart in half. I don't think he trimmed the fat enough, and I'm not sure if he took the skin off on the outside. His time wasn't very neat, I did see that. Yes. And a bit of a mess. Isn't he doing a cauliflower puree, which I love the sound of? Yes. And he was going to do a confit garlic, which I'm looking forward to that as well. That would be nice. And, and he did uh, roast off his bones. He seems to be making a sauce with that, which, mm. which is good. Mm. Unlike his rivals, Michael is keeping his options open and preparing two completely different dishes. Hello, Michael. Yeah. How, How are you doing? Are you? I'm fine. You look very relaxed. Yeah, I'm quite confident, you know. So what are you going to do to it? OK, I'm going to cook it in two ways. One way is uh, cook it inside the sauce, in the, in the oven. The other way, just literally cook it in the oven. And so really you, sure. so you, you've got a backup? Yeah, always backup. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing two dishes? Yeah. And then you'll choose at the end yeah, which yeah. one? Which one? One was going to be served with rice, and one with just vegetables. Fantastic. Thank you, darling. Yeah. See you later, Michael. Michael was an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> Butchery skills? I thought he did very well. I think he was quite a surprise, really, and he knew exactly what the, the lamb was and how old it was. He's planning on doing a roasted piece and a poached, poached, poached yes. piece. Yes, I saw the poached one. I'm, I'm really unsure about it. I, I've never seen anything like it. We might see something quite interesting there. I was very interested in the fact that he was so laid back and relaxed. <laughs> Good. Lastly is Rishikesh, who wants to show off his expertise by serving the hogget in two different ways. Your turn. What, are you, turn. what are you doing uh, here? I've taken the bone off. The bones are cooking up there, along with two couple of potatoes, which I need for mash. This is the mushroom uh, filling, which will go here in the center. Fillet, they have been diced, nicely caramelized them. I'm going to add some carrots, some Jerusalem artichokes, and that is going to be like pie mix. So that potato puree will stand on there and we'll caramelize it nicely. I, I honestly, I'm drooling after and, these uh, three. Lastly, once the bones are nicely roasted, the chicken stock and the veal stock will help us in doing a lovely light jus gras, which will go with all this thing. So, uh, <laughs> as per the time, I need to press on. Okay, <laughs> okay. sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, Rishikesh, and he is one who's doing his hogget two ways. I love the fact that he's doing two, two ways of doing the meat, and, yeah. and the bit that he's got left over, he's reusing, which is really good kitchen skills. And so. his, his knife skills and his uh, training is just shining through. The, the flesh was very smooth, wasn't it? Yeah. There was no hacking at that at all. No, and, and, and the, the fat The cleaning of his workstation yeah. uh, was, was so precise. He's quite nervous, isn't he? He is. So I hope the pressure of this uh, doesn't get to him. Anyone have some spare butter already? Yes, chef. One second. How much you want? Just a little bit. OK, lovely. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, using? Um, do you want to use, do a pump your idea? Literally two seconds. This. Two seconds okay. and yeah, I'll go, go, go. Yeah? Yes. This is the time to start running. <laughs> um, someone give us a time. There are just five minutes to go. Oh, my God. This is so hard. 
Yeah, I'm looking good. Uh, I've got my meat resting. I've got my garnishes starting to come together now. Um, just need to uh, just finish the, finish the dish off, really, and, and concentrate on, on plating it. The finishing stage now. Uh, lamb is cooked. It has rested nicely, so all the juices will be nice and tender. Michael's still deciding which dish to hedge his bets on. Just play two plates, see which one I like best. <laughs> yeah, let's start plating, man. Time's up. I've not decided yet. Um, this is more complete. Fine. OK. The chef's food must be Michelin star standard. Perfectly cooked, flavoured and presented. I think you guys have done an amazing job. You know, I, I, we, we were actually a bit worried about this challenge, so well done anyway. Thanks. Ian's pan-roasted hoggart has been flavoured with rosemary and mint. It's served with parsnip crisps, confit garlic, buttered leeks, a cauliflower puree and a stock and white wine jus. Shall we start launching? The meat is lovely. It doesn't look very nice because of the fat. The fat. And I love the puree. The little fillet is delicious, mm -hmm. as you would expect it to be. The parsnip crisps are lovely. Is that a bit undercooked? Really? Just, just, just marginally. <laughs> but it's full of flavour, and I think you, you know it, the sauce is lovely, and I think the um, the vegetables are cooked lovely. Mm. You know, overall, a very good job. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Much. I personally don't like the plate on with that dish. No, I very good point. Mm. I think if you're going to use a dark plate, you need to have really vibrant colours. Yeah, I think the comments I got were fair. Uh, you know, I agree the, the lamb wasn't rendered enough, I knew that myself. In an hour and a half, uh, you know, that's, I was quite pleased with the way things went. Michael chose to serve his braised and pan-fried hogget, cooked with rosemary, garlic and mint. It's served with roasted mushrooms, carrots, shallots, chilli pepper and a fennel cream. Is this the braised lamb or the one that you just roasted and then rested? Um, this is the braised lamb. And then you pan fried the outside? Yes. I mean, it's quite more delicate, actually, isn't it? Mm. Um, and weren't you pleasantly surprised by the meat? Because yeah, I, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, I saw you doing that. I thought, what's that going to be like? And, <laughs> and actually, you know, and you still managed to brown it off. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with you that. You used an Italian method. The skin's beautifully uh, flavoured. And it's lovely. I would enjoy that very much mm. anywhere yes. I went. And I like your presentation. Thank you. Very much. I thought that was a pretty dish. Mm. For me, it was really fair. You, they didn't say they didn't like it. I think I cooked well. My food didn't have no fat. It was cooked at perfection. And that's all I can say, you know. Lastly is Rishikesh's dish. Roasted hoggett sits on a bed of Savoy cabbage with carrots, parsnips, shallots, and a Jerusalem artichoke puree. He has also braised some diced hoggett in chicken stock and served in a potato skin. Very delicate. Very refined, mm. classic look. What, what I quite like is that the potato in yes, there and having the that kind of gives it a rusticness. First which, one, which... that's what I'm going to go straight <laughs> in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I love everything about it, but the fat is so fatty. <laughs> yes. It slightly ruined the, the actual saddle for me. Mm. Real shame a bit on that fat, and there was something very tough just on the inside of the fat. 
that presentation, I find, it's so, it's very fine dining. Mm -hmm. It's a very classic presentation. Yeah. I think I think there is a trend towards a more organic, um, mixed up look. I loved your braised lamb fillet. Thank you. In the crispy potato shell. You got the skins just right. The mm. flavour through from that was was wonderful. It, it was it was a very difficult challenge, uh, considering you are in a new environment, new kitchen, and you are working with different equipments. But at the same time. As a chef, you just have to take the challenge and use your experience. Portion control is also vital for a chef's ability to turn a profit, and Alex wants to know if the candidates know their cuts. So how much do you think that little bit of lamb weighed? I mean, what uh, I'd say that's about 110 grams. Yeah, and what would you say yours was? If his was an 110, my 120. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than 120. Yeah. I quite like having a big bit of lamb, I have to say. Mm. Um, that worked very well for me. And what about you? Richard? I work on 120, but then it's the lamb will be somewhere between 60, 80, and then the rest will be in that potato. Fine. Do you have an ideal portion size that you're looking for? I mean, I understand how you are normally serving this, which is as a whole roll saddle for two people to share. Mm. Um, but your main course protein? We would be looking at about 130. What you, you would try and do is also is mix with your, your, your very expensive meat with some of your, your brazy meats as well to get better value out of your meat offering. As the chefs taste the competition, Alex, Barney and Christine discuss developments so far. That has set the cat amongst the pigeons, hasn't it? Mm. Ian, what did you like and what didn't you? His lamb was the best, I think. Yes. And In terms of the, 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 the yes. texture, but, yeah. but, but the, uh, the, the fat wasn't browned off at all. He immediately lost us with the plate mm. choice, yeah. yes. didn't he? Mm. That was a schoolboy error, I would say. Yeah. Michael? He was the only one who got the fat right. Yes. Absolutely. On the lamb. Mm. He did better than I expected. Mm. It's just not a fine dining dish, mm. is it? No. Rishikesh? The disappointment for me was that the, that the lamb, he more than most, should have got that lamb absolutely mm. nailed. I didn't enjoy that lamb. You know, it's probably not the best out of all the three of them. Well done, man. Well done, chefs. Oh, well, we did all right, yeah. don't we? Yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll see what happens next. The family are looking for a chef who can deal with the demands of a hotel kitchen, which differ from a restaurant. Our business is people coming mainly for two, three, four days. This requires a totally different menu structure to in a restaurant. If we are to prevent our guests from going out to the many other restaurants and hotels in the area, we have got to make ourselves attracted to them for several days which means offering a casual dining option if they prefer. Not everyone wants to eat Michelin star food every night, so striking a balance is key. I'm keen to talk with you and explore with you how hard it is to offer the, the fine dining experience and also make sure that you please all the people all the time. And I'm wondering how, how you think it works here. We've combined a slightly casual dining menu with a fine dining menu, and I think it's probably true to say that it was complicated. Yes. It was very difficult to operate, and I'm not sure that it was totally satisfactory from the guest's point of view. So, I've been doing some research, and there are 11 Michelin-starred hotels in London, and eight in the rest of England. All of them have the brasserie. I have a couple of examples that I've found, yeah. the ones who are doing it, Lucknam Park, that's the park restaurant, isn't it? Yes, and this is the brasserie. Mm -hmm. And then there's this one, Simon Radley at the Chester Grosvenor. So that's mm -hmm. his fine dining menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they also do the brasserie. So this is interesting. This is two different menus from the same place, and we have done two separate menus. Yeah. But the only difference is they've got two different restaurants. Different. Yeah. And we've we've given two different menus to people in here. Because it's in the one one restaurant. One, I completely, complete I completely confusion. understand. What most hotels with Michelin restaurants do is have separate dining areas with different names and identities. One such establishment is Penny Hill Park in Surrey. Chef Michael Wignall runs the Michelin two-star Latimer restaurant. 
start getting together on two intermediate veg. It's just important that within a hotel you offer something for everyone without jeopardising what you do. You know, when, when someone comes to a two-star, they, they, you know, they're going to expect to have more adventurous food. That's why they're coming to a two-star restaurant. You know, a lot of the dishes are complex. You know, it's important that you keep the, keep the guest interested. Check on hair, duck, halibut, John Dory, sat and away. Yes, we've obviously got different outlets to cater for everyone's taste. We've got the brasserie, we've got the spa, you know, and they've all got to work hand in hand, really. You know, everything's got to flow and everything's got to fit in. You are then a food destination as well as a five-star hotel, so, you know, it can only be good for both parties. Alex thinks turning one of the Gilpin's three dining areas into a brasserie could be a benefit. It is guest focused rather than a superstar chefs focused. Totally. <laughs> totally. Point made. Absolutely. Very clearly. So finding the right chef is crucial. It's midday. Our three candidates have two more chances to make an impression and secure a place on the shortlist for the final interview. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, hello. Yeah. Each chef has had a few days to plan their signature dish which will best show off their culinary flair. But before kicking off, they have to face the Cunliffe family for a sit-down interview. It's a lot of us, there's four of us, but um, you know, we, we, this is a very big decision for us, so we would like to make it together. First to go under the spotlight is Ian. His 15-year career has included working for Albert Roux, one of the country's leading chefs. OK, see you later, guys. Good, Good luck, All the best. Man. All the best. But this position could be his chance to win a Michelin star of his own. I've got to meet them all. I've got to, I've got to speak to them, find out what they want, see if I'm the person they're looking for. They like me, they like me. If they don't, they don't. We'll try and be kind. In the, the earliest part of your career, a lot of the time you spent in pubs with one or two rosettes. That's correct. At Chez Roux with Albert Roux at the Rock Pool. What, yeah. is that, does that have, what accolades does that have? It's a five-star um, boutique hotel, so it does breakfast, yeah. um, lunch, afternoon tea. You say working closely with, with um, Albert yes. Roux here. Yes, I mean, yes. Do you mean up, you were working with him? Very, very much so. He was up uh, four times a year, yeah. for a week to two weeks. I mean, would Albert know who you are, course, say that his work course, with you? And what would he say about you? I am sure he would be uh, give a fair description of, um, of how I've worked, which is very hard, good food, um, so I'm sure he'd give a, a good reference. If I said to him, what, what's his weaknesses to Albert, um, what do you say? Uh, well, you'd have to ask him more. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your weaknesses are? What do I think my weaknesses are? Um, what do I think my weaknesses are? Uh, uh, um, experience. I'd say. Do you, do you understand what this position involves? I do. I do in, uh, I understand perfectly. So explain in, it to us. The impression I get for this job is to um, run the whole kitchen, the whole, the whole shebang. Costings, I would say, um, spending a lot of my time, in, most of my time in the kitchen developing dishes. Um, um, it's, I think it's all-encompassing. All can I ask, how difficult would it be for you to relocate up here? Are you married? Do you have children? I'm with uh, my partner of nine years. Yes. Um, we have actually discussed it. Um, we're used to living in rural areas. We live in Aberdeenshire, uh, Perthshire, um, uh, Inverness. Where are you so both from? Um, I'm from Middlesbrough, um, and my partner's from Poland. OK. So, children? Uh, not, not yet. <laughs> I have not done the time. <laughs> 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 Doesn't take long, mate, to make them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you very much, Ian. We'll see you in a minute. Okay. Good luck with your signature dish. No problem. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye -bye. Uh, good luck, guys, huh? <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. That's got to be the worst interview I've ever had for. But then it's, uh, it is three rows up, so... What do you think? Yeah, interviewed well. Yeah. Interviewed very yeah. well, yeah. He seemed to have a good understanding of what the role of an executive head chef would be. He said about the nurturing and the development yes. and the food development. He's used to rural <laughs> areas. And he does sound like you'd re relocate as well. I, yeah. I got yeah. a sense that that wouldn't be a, a, a problem. Get me the question myself, you know, am I, am, I, am I capable of doing this job? Which, I don't know. Am I capable? I don't know. All I can do is cook, but um, it's not me that makes the decision. 
Wow. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be the next, isn't it? You are. Right, Good luck, Chef. Thank you. Good night. Good luck. So next we have Michael Acquacci. He's a London-based chef. His his influences unusually are mainly Italian. Mm. Mm. Michael, Hello, darling, Michael. the John and Zoe. Hello, Michael. Yeah. And Hello. you know Christina. Hello, Barney. Michael. Michael's food has impressed them so far, but his lack of experience is a worry. I'd like to ask you, how did you get on with um, Barney and Christine, who might be your bosses? Okay, the people I've met, they, they're lovely. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, lo um, I, I met you earlier on. So you think you, could, you think you could work here? Yeah, I think I could work here, and I, I, I like feedback. On your CV, it's all restaurants. Have you worked no. chef in a hotel before? No. No. Never. So how do you envisage the difference? Because it is quite a difference. Yeah, I know. Um, literally, before working in this restaurant where I'm working now, I've never done breakfast before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite a, a Lucky thing. Lucky boy. Because... Then, you know, my wife was telling me, yeah, it's just breakfast. But it's not just breakfast, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting it right. It's getting, you know, uh, cooked uh, uh, perfection because people demand that, you know. That, that's yeah. the standard of, of, the, of the restaurant. Is your wife Italian or is she yeah, English? Yeah, she's, she's Italian. Italian. Yeah. And she's in London? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You children? have children? Yeah, two children. How old? Eight and two. So. Yeah. OK, thank yeah, you, yeah, Michael. Nice thank you. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Good luck. Hi, guys. <laughs> Good? Yeah. OK, they must have took easy on you, then, huh? That <laughs> <laughs> was it. So it's like having four people interrogating you. That's... You understand? Can we do? Now I know why Ian said all the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice man. Yeah. Charming, mm. friendly, smiley, great attitude. A little bit intimidating at the beginning, but then, you know, hearing the question is not really that. Intimidating. It was, it was fun. <laughs> and after hearing what the others have said, <laughs> I don't think so. It's a joy ride. So <laughs> we will see how it goes. See, see you later, guys. Hi, right, good luck. Cheers. Good luck, really. Cheers. Award-winning chef Rishikesh has been cooking professionally for over 12 years. On paper, he has lots to offer, but his CV has thrown up some doubts. We haven't got too much time, so let me come straight to the point. You've gone from being head chef in the Michelin star rest restaurant, mm -hmm. to head chef in the brasserie, to head chef in the cookery school. That's correct. Uh, it could be argued that maybe it should have been the other way around. The reason why I went from the head chef from the Michelin star to the brasserie was to more enjoy more responsibilities, have more influence on the food cost. How do I manage team? That was very, very important. So was there a particular reason it was you that it was chosen to do the cookery school? I think it, um, the reason why I was chosen to do cookery school was where my man management skills. Hmm. Your length of service with uh, Latinum and your uh, dedication to them is commendable, but do you feel that, that, that they've, you're still stretching yourself? Latinum Park is, is one happy family now. Mm. Ten years I've spent up there, uh, and uh, without their support, I won't be able to do what I'm doing right now, be in front of you. Brilliant. Can I ask something? Because you seem like a paragon of virtue. <laughs> <laughs> and so I need to ask you, what are your weaknesses? Uh, the weakness is I think I'm a bit too organised and I'm too hard on myself. Does actually. it stress you out? Uh, stress, not really, no. Do you take it out on other people? If you... uh, no, not no. really, no. That's, the, that's my wife's job. <laughs> 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 uh, we want you to let you get on because we want you to wow us with your signature dish. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. The Lightning does nurture people, and if, if he comes along, he'll be his first move out. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's a certain amount of risk there we've got to take Absolutely. on account. Absolutely. Um, it, and, uh, and he's been very protected. But, but, I, but I was really surprised, though, that he got his lamb slightly yeah. wrong. Yeah. So there is still room for surprises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Good, bad? I survived, Chef, survived. Ah. That's, that's the best way to, do it, to call it. Did they ask you any difficult questions? Why did I go from fine dining to brasserie, brasserie side? OK. Uh, in the same place which, where I worked. Why did you go from fine dining to brasserie <laughs> side? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me. You are horrible. Uh, <laughs> Damn, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was more to learn about man management. Did they fall for that, did they? Yeah, uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see. Two tests complete, and the chefs have one last chance to impress. There are 
There are eight chefs in this competition. I'm the ninth one. All, all nine of us are competing for the same job. Uh, but it's my time to prove that this is, this is what I want. The final part of their interview is to prepare a signature dish that could sit on the hotel's four-course 58-pound menu. As well as cooking to Michelin standard, they will need to bring the dish in on budget. Are we ready? It's a question. You're making a fish stock? Making a fish stock. That's 25 minutes, isn't it? Doesn't take long. Make a fish stock, make an oyster beignette. I've got to make a puree. Well, are you doing no mushroom puree as well, are you? No, 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 uh, squash. Squash, squash puree. Squash puree. puree. Yeah, it's nice colour. Um, balsamic onions. Loose. Making a, a pom maxime as well, but that's 20, 20 minutes. Go risotto. risotto. Uh, no, risotto will be a fritter, beignet. It's on the sauce, aioli, well, rui. Tomato relish, to be honest. No sauce. You've forgotten anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you start, you'll come to know. Oops, there we go. I forgot. Yeah, what are you going to start with? I'm really done. You're already finished? Yeah, I'm really ah. done. I, 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 need, I need to do the gnocchi. That's oh, really okay. the big part of right, it. Fine. Ten minutes, bam, boom, cooked. Finished. How are you do guys doing with the costings? Huh? The ingredients is 466. Of all the ingredients? Yeah, it's not expensive. The combined ingredients for this main course dish should cost between five and seven pounds. This amounts to about 35% of the final price. Any more, and the dish will run at a loss. Only this is eight pounds, yeah? Burrata. Only this, two pounds, because obviously with what I'm going to use, yeah? Mine is running at 570, I think so. With the clock ticking, it's time for the cooking to commence. These are crones, or Japanese artichokes. It's gonna, let's say, pimp it up. Yeah, it's gonna push it up. The signature dish that I've decided to do today is the winning dish. It, it fits on a Michelin star menu. It's a perfect fish dish for this time of year. It's gonna hit all the right notes. It's gonna be clean on the plate. They're going to love it. Very nice. How are you doing, Ian? <sighs> crazy day, huh? It's a crazy day. Just doing the pond scene. Uh, I've got a nice fish stock on. I don't know what you're making. Why don't you talk me through okay, it? OK, so what I'm doing is I've got a... That's actually gilt head... Uh, gilt head bream is what I'm yeah. using. It's served with uh, keta caviar with an oyster cream sauce. I'm using kale, a uh, little bit of little bit of rui, little dots of rui, and I'm doing seaweed butter as well. It's I hard. love kale, and I love so the fact hard. that you've used three types of kale. Yeah. That's really fun. Nice colours, different different shapes. Yes. I, I do like your menu. Um, darling, why have you chosen this dish? Um, I chose the fish because it's inexpensive, but very uh, very seasonal. But it's all about cooking it. So yeah. if I just cook it the right way. My signature dish is simple. It's basically very, very Italian, but uh, with a twist, a touch of everywhere. I call it fillet with heart of mozzarella di bufala. Gnocchi, you can give it any, any shape. This is the normal shape of gnocchi, but I want to try and give it another shape just to create a dish that doesn't look normal. Basically, it's taste. And every time I make it, you know, people get shocked. Michael, what are you making us today? I'm going to make fillets with the heart of burrata. Yes, I wanted to see what this was. So this is the very inside of the mozzarella, isn't it? Uh, yeah, um, this is burrata. It's quite different from mozzarella. Mozzarella is quite hard. This is creamy. It... May I have the tiniest, tiniest taste of that now? Yeah. It's <laughs> that bit you want to taste. Yeah. Almost, it's almost fat up. It's like, it's delicious. Oh, it's heaven. <laughs> Yeah. Thank mm. you. It's a, <laughs> it's a fantastic product. Thank you. What gross profit are you used to working with? Okay. To? It's um, very, very expensive, but it's, how do you say it? It's um, wealthy. Okay, this is My pure wife taste. says that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the type of cuisine that I do. Really simple, great ingredients, and then combination. I'm going to surprise you. Sounds uh, great. Yeah. It, 
it's going to be nice. I, I, I wish. It sounds mm -hmm. divine, I've got to say. And it's got all the best, you know, that cheese, the fillet and yeah. wild yeah. mushrooms. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm uh, really um, looking forward to this. Yeah. yeah, this job have everything that I think I need. Position, location, to live outside London with my family, a dream. I'm a no-nonsense chef. I believe in flavors. I believe in textures. I believe in modern cooking techniques, but at the same time, I believe in the classic cooking techniques. And I think uh, this dish has got that edge to win. Hi, tell us what you're making us. I'm going to do lamb again. Good. It's OK, I like that. Again, a savoy cabbage. Lovely, I love savoy cabbage. Uh, I don't know how, how come it is like that. I know lamb, savoy cabbage. Um, one of those dishes which is, has got a South Indian feel and I'm going to pair it with risotto fritter, risotto and mushroom. Mm. So east meets west or west meets east, whichever way you want to call it. There's a squash puree that's got a tiny flavour of cumin to it, so it's going to be very, very subtle. OK, and then I'm going to make some balsamic onions, which will give the sweet and sour effect. It's a complex dish. It's a very complex dish, to be honest. Of all dishes that you could have made, why have you chosen this one? Uh, this is to showcase my skills in, in an ethnic cuisine, simple as that. And that is, that is my personality. This is what I want to showcase. Good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Oh, wait. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice, no, fine. Maybe too tasty. Because when something is really too tasty, it's not good as well. I don't want the gnocchi to stand out. That's not the main. I want the fillet to stand out. Are you guys doing over there? Good. Not so good. Not so not good. So. If you need a hand, just call me. <laughs> I'm here. It's easy, huh? that's, that's easy. Yeah, oh, yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, guys, we're plating now. You ready to plate, Ian? Huh? I'm ready to plate, yes. Yeah, this guy, you, you're ready. You say you know I'm, you are. I'm ready, huh? You'll be the first, isn't it? After a strong first dish and a good interview, could this be the plate that gets Ian a place on the final interview shortlist? Let's go. Good luck, guys. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Nice. We've got great expectations of this dish. Oh. Thanks, darling. Good and guys. Enjoy. Mm. Wow. Doesn't that look nice? Ian's poached gilt head bream is served with an oyster beignet, keta caviar, kale, and seaweed butter. It comes with an oyster cream sauce. Costing just £4.66, Ian's dish is the cheapest of all the chefs and well below the five to seven pound target price. Are you pleased with how it's come out? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things I could improve on. I think the, the squareness of the fish, I think I can improve on that. Um, but I'm, overall, I'm, I'm quite, quite pleased with their looks. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit upset, Ian, because you had some great kale of three different varieties, yeah. and, and I just wish that, that wasn't You'd hidden seen it. under the a couple fish of bits. There, and, yeah. and you had a more organic look. It's all you under there. Right. Isn't it's it? all under there, right. and, and and yeah, that was a shame for me. Yeah. I was, I have to confess, the, the ingredients that you chose, and I was looking for a really light, simple-looking plate, yeah. and and somehow there's just too much going on there for me. There's, there's no doubt in the flavours, though. Very, very good. Uh, I love the, the seaweed butter. Me too. I've not had that before, and that, that's... That with the fish and the burst of the caviar together was really scrumptious. Taste of the sea, certainly. Definitely. Um, yeah. I think that is not a dish I would turn away from my table. You've definitely demonstrated that you've got cooking technique there and, 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 uh, and you know how to do flavour combinations. I think there's just a bit of work with the presentation, I think, as well. I think. Thanks, love. Thanks very much. Really successful dish. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys.
How was it? It's OK. It's good. Yeah? Yeah. Any other bits to the set? Were they good? Yeah. Good comments. Good comments. Overall, apart from the presentation, that was a nicely put together dish. It was a gorgeous dish. I really enjoyed that. And, and uh, there was a lot of techniques that he used there on one plate. And he's done that in quite a short time as well, hasn't he? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm happy what went on the plate. It could have been a little bit better, could have been a little bit more refined. Uh, I'd have to agree. There's two of the guys in this kitchen, um, you know, they're just as worthy as me to go through. So I'm definitely not out of this yet. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to see. Okay. Here we go. I can't wait to try this eight-pound piece of fillet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Thank Michael. You. Oh, yeah. We've been looking forward to this. Thank you very much, sir. Michael's dish is pan-fried fillet of beef stuffed with burrata cheese. It's served with roast mushrooms, basil gnocchi, and Japanese artichokes. The fillet cost eight pounds, and the burrata, two pounds, which means Michael's dish well exceeds the seven pound limit. What a slab of meat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great big plate of heart attack. It's great, <laughs> in many ways. It's, it's not too delicate, Michael. No, 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 at all, yeah, no. A bit more caramelised on beef, it might have been. And mm -hmm. I think it's slightly less than medium rare. To mm. me, that looks like rare. That is lovely, isn't it? It's almost like a sauce itself. I think we agree. Burrata yummy. The ingredients mm. are yummy. But I'm yeah. not sure that that's how the I presentation. would Presentation, yeah. Yes, mm. yes, exactly. You know, there are many positives in that dish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but, it, but it, it's, it's not fine dining. Um, and, and, and even under brasserie style, I think, mm -hmm. you know, there's some schoolboy errors there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you go without eating the rest of that burrata <laughs> and toss it. Mm. Oh, you're leaving that bit, thank you. I'll leave you back in London. Thank you. Bye. Bye. For now. So that dish was a bit of a disaster. Yeah. I love his cheerfulness, I'm... though, and his, his, his whole attitude is... It's uh, wonderful. Yeah. I mean, he's a lovely guy, and uh, we have to be honest with ourselves. It's not fine dining, and he doesn't know what he's doing on that front. Well, if nothing else, service. he's introduced you to burrata. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, done, boss. How'd it go? How'd it go? It went, it went quite good, but obviously uh, it had you know, the size of the meat. Yeah, everyone else, the taste, they love it. But yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy they liked it. It's, oh, well. It's, it's all about the tasting for me. It you know? is. Lastly, it's Rishikesh. Alex and the owners found flaws in his first dish, so he has a lot to prove. Minute, two minutes max. Watch out, watch out, it's gonna fall. Nice. Nice. Really nice. Okay, yeah, so what do you think? Who knows? Who knows, yeah, Who that's, knows? The that's the thing. Depends but... what they're looking for. Huh? Depends what they're looking for. Yeah. You can be surprised sometimes. Hello, Rishikesh. Hello, hello. Swanny. There we are. You've been busy. Rishikesh has used loin of lamb, served with savoy cabbage, a risotto and mushroom fritter, squash and cumin puree, and a samba salsa. The combined cost of the ingredients is £5.70, well within the guide price. That puree is delicious. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one word to say, mm. which is yummy. Thank you. 
plate. Mm. <laughs> it's not very professional, <laughs> I know. Really clean the plate. <laughs> but I, I mean, there's not one aspect, not one element of that dish that I don't in, didn't enjoy. Very exciting too, isn't it? Mm. All the textures and flavours. Thank you. Thank you very much. The salsa is one of the nicest mm. salsas. It's just so light and fresh. Um. And that puree. Mm. I mean, it's fantastic. Happy with the presentation? Very happy with the presentation. Very happy with the cooking techniques. Um, I was really worried you were going to go... Uh, it wasn't going to work when I saw the description. Mm. Um, there was a lot of uh, uh, Eastern influences in there, mm. and I thought, is this yes. going to go too far? Uh, um, but you haven't. I would have eaten that whole so, plate on my own yeah. without, um, you know, moments thought it was delicious. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. There you go, guys. Sweet. Wow. If you want to taste something. Yeah, mine is finished. Happy? Yes. Happy, yes. Can I taste it? Yes, the, um, please go ahead. And uh, was... everyone seemed pretty happy with them. Uh, yeah. Well, Start through the look and fuzz it. I think you remember the channels. I don't know. There was a tiny piece of yeah, lamb. We've, we've smashed that. You smashed it. There's a little bit of salsa, etc. So. Nice so now it's the waiting game. Chefs, well done again. Well, well, done. Well. Yeah. well done. Good too. Uh, okay. yeah. right. And then whatever the result will be, mm. it was brilliant in all of you. So. Uh, well, I mean, what is there to say apart from he pulled that out of the bag and mm. aced it, mm. didn't he? It was a lot of components with a lot of complexity, uh, a lot of skill done in a very short time. I can't believe it. I think we can accept that this is, uh, you know, Michael is a, a, a different level entirely. Yes, yes. Um, but Ian has a sense of maturity and, uh, and I think business-wise, uh, he has a business head on his shoulders. Mm. Yes. So what do you think, Alex? Have you made a decision? I have. You have. Uh, but, as I always say, the decision isn't mine and I would love you to go and talk to the rest of the family and then I will come and hear your decision. Only one chef can be picked to go through to the final interview at the end of the week. With Michael out of the running, the decision lies between Rishikesh and Ian. So, look, this is the problem we face. You know, on the one hand, I think, I think it's probably unanimous that Rishikesh has got that refined skill there. Um, but the big question we've got is, you know, will he be able to cope out of the environment that he's been in? The comfort one, uh, really. And comfort wise, mm. can he really manage a team on his own? Um, can he really deal with the pressure of the commercial environment? And, and when that's where Ian's strength is, really. He's already mm. proven himself out there commercially. As a manager. As a manager. Mm. But then his technique wasn't as mm. fine. So this is where we've got a way up, isn't it? It's a situation I'm very familiar with. This is a family business. They're all passionate about their baby. Of course, they want lots of touchy-feely qualities, but more than anything else, they need to think of this commercially, and they need to find a chef who will make sure that their profitability only continues to rise. Historically, I get the job I go for. If I, if I make an interview, I get the job. I've been waiting for this for a long period of time. If they say to me that I'll get the job, uh, it will be amazing. That nervous wait now. Yeah. It's the moment of truth. Good evening, chefs. Good evening. Good evening. So, first of all, I think we all want to say to you thank you so much. It's been a great day. There has been no easy way to make a decision. Well, first off, guys, thank you very much. You've done a great job today and you've really made it a, a great experience and I hope you've enjoyed it. It was yeah. wonderful. Um, of course, we've got to make a decision. It's a tough one and the family have been discussing it and um, we have come up with a decision, but it has been tough. Michael, the dish that we had this afternoon was a lovely dish in many ways. It was a concept idea, but it was yeah. very blunt in yeah. how it was presented. Yeah. And uh, for that reason, I think that we need to decide to say that, you know, you won't be going further forward in this. OK. All right? Fine. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. thank you. And you've yeah. done a great job. Thank and you. And you've been very charming in the process as well. <laughs> We've enjoyed you. meeting you. Guys, this is where it's been quite tough, you know. Um, Ian, on the one hand, um, you have been out there on the coalface. You've proven yourself as a manager. Your interview went very well. You know, we don't have concerns, really, about your management. 
but you know, whether your cooking can be up to this level, we're not so sure. Rishikesh, from our point of view for you, yourself, that last dish was superb this evening. You know, it really was, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. But of course, you've been at Lucknow Park for quite some time now, you know, so we don't really yet know, can Rishikesh be managing in this kind of uh, environment here? And this is the dilemma that we both had to uh, debate. Rishikesh, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Well Thank you so much. Pleasure to meet you, Mike. Well done, Rishikesh. Thank, Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Very it's been a pleasure to meet you, Mike. Congratulations. All the very best. Thank you. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's something what I is my ambition. That's the first step, uh, first goal. It is take one step at a time and see what happens. I saw his dish. It was clearly, you know, a winning dish. Now I know where I stand now. I know I have to improve myself. Yeah, I mean, I'm disappointed, but I think uh, I put up a good show. But I thought I'd chance me arm. You never know. <laughs> you got to be in it to win it. Very happy, very happy that I'm in the next round. Uh, I'll have to up my game, have to come up with, uh, the, the ideas are there, but have to come up with the right presentation and then with the right attitude, right mind. And I hope that I'll be able to cl cling on to it. Today was really good. I uh, thought initially it was going to be a one horse race, which would have been quite boring. But honestly, the right decision was made because Rishikesh has the experience, he has the desire, and he definitely has the skills.